Hi guys, welcome back. This is Matt Shett, episode 529, featuring the game Task Times in Tone Town, with commentary uh, from yours truly, of course, but also Becky Berger Heinemann and Matt Bradley Shurgi, who will be playing the game as uh, Becky and I uh, converse about it. Uh, this is a kind of a different Matt Shett. We haven't tried something like this before. Uh, but it just kind of occurred to me that it might be something fun to try. Uh, let me know what you think. If you want to see more videos in this style, we can certainly arrange that. Uh, but anyway, uh, we all had a good time doing this, and I hope you'll like it too. So, without further ado, here is Task Times in Tone Town. What do you think, Becky? This, is, uh, this shirt, is it slippy enough? Is it Task? Is it Tone? <laughs> Oh, I can't hear anybody. That's because I'm muted. Oh, yeah. We don't yeah, you jetted on down to the teak. Yeah, yeah. How'd you know? <laughs> All right. Down to teak. Let's see. I've been having some fun with this newspaper. Blob pets. Got to get your blood pets. Hey, I'm performing keyboards down over as an opening act. <laughs> nice. Don't forget uh, Map Snivel, who's Pam Levins, is an acronym. Most of the reporters' names are there are people who work at Activision. We just acronym their, or anagram their names. <laughs> yeah, that was, I think I saw some, uh, let's see, what was it? So do I want to share my screen, I guess, so you can see the game? Yeah, Brian Fart G out. <laughs> Brian. <laughs> kind of works. <laughs> hey, we were having fun. I mean, the the my tagline when we were making the game was it's the closest thing to a drug trip without actually taking drugs. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I haven't been on a, a drug trip. Matt Bradley, sure you might want to. <laughs> I don't know, I'm pretty straight laced. Yeah, let's see. So you can, let's see, can you hear me? Can you hear the? I don't th think I can make it so you can hear the game, but I can't hear the game though. Okay, that's fine. It's just PC speaker. I don't think you're missing. Yeah, I mean, back to playing the PC version means is that uh, audio really isn't there. I mean, the real music no. was done for the 2GS version. That's the one that has a soundtrack. Yeah, that's your favorite version, I assume. Well, yeah. I mean, uh, we, when I was developing this game, Apple came up with something called Project Portland, and they showed us the prototype, and we were like, I was already fell in love with it. But our problem was that Task Times in Tone Town had just shipped on the uh, Apple II and the PC, and they told us, oh, yeah, we're going to be shipping this Apple II GS in six weeks. And we're like, oh, um, but I could easily port this game to the platform. But sound, you know, sound was the word. And uh, so I ended up having to do the port. It took like two and a half, three weeks to do it. Most of that work was doing the soundtrack. Um, because the, oh, the art came straight from the Amiga version. It took the Amiga version, converted it, done. Um, so all it really was to do was the um, game engine, which mostly was just 6502. I didn't really change anything. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why that went over quickly. But the rest of it was learning 65816 and figuring out how the Sonic chip worked. And Russell Lieblick, I don't know if you know about him, he's one of the main audio designers at Activision. When I told him what the... 2GS could do. He just says, just grab me, put him in this room, you know, his um, office. And he says, we're not leaving here until we do a soundtrack. And that's, and it was just an intense two week uh, programming session to write that soundtrack. I was looking at the G, the GS, of course, graphic and sound. Mm -hmm. What kind of sound uh, hardware did it have? Do, 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 do. In Sonic Wavetable Synthesis Sound Chip, 32 oscillators and voice channels. Oh, yeah. Um, have you ever heard of a um, synthesizer called the Ensonic Mirage? Very popular for musicians back in the day. That chip is what powered the Ensonic Mirage. 
the ESQ1 is another one that used it. Um, but effectively, it, it's a, literally a synthesizer, full on synthesizer. It's it, even to this day, you'd be hard pressed to find any PC who has a sound chip that's comparable to this thing. Yeah, I was just looking. It says it was used by Skinny Puppy, Vangelis. Oh, there you go. You had me. At, you should have led with Vangelis. Yeah. <laughs> Jimmy Edgar, Jimmy Jam. I bet Tangerine Dream probably took it for a spin. Mm -hmm. Anybody who was into electronic music had an Ensonic, uh, one of their line. Nice. But the, the only drawback was that on the 2GS, they didn't hook up true stereo output. You had to get a little tiny board that gave you true stereo. And um, instead of being 128K of memory, because that's what the chip could use, they only put 64K. So half the memory, but you could still do a lot. And uh, just, you know, the music that was done in Task Times and Tone Town, I use a little board, so it's true stereo. So if you had a little board, hooked up some stereo speakers, you had stereo separation, it worked, it sounded great. You gotta figure out a way to play that. <laughs> if I recall, Kegs might be a, a 2GS emulator that can uh, do it. Okay, so what are we looking at here, Matt? What is the... <laughs> This is the DOS version of uh, Task Times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we released it in 1985, 86, or around that time frame. So Windows 95 was still nine years in the future. <laughs> Man, you're not stuck already, are you? Oh, no, no. I'm looking at a walkthrough <laughs> here. Let's see. Uh, it's a point and click adventure, which was also something that was unheard of in 1985, 86. We don't normally pay guests, but I do have some currency. <laughs> uh, hey, well, I'm gonna pick. I gotta go jet on down to the teak. Get yourself a uh, <laughs> die cut dinorama. Let's see that spot. I'm totally gonna do that. And purr if he could, but he can't. Okay, so I mean, let's see with this. Uh... Oh, come on, try to kill him. Kill the dog. Kill it. <laughs> Can't help. What the hell, Matt? You <laughs> <laughs> the dog? <laughs> oh, burger. What is it Sorry. about these games that brings out the sadistic in people? So I think people... They, kill they, just, they want to see if they can. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Read note, you can't help but notice the anchovy and pepperoni combo has been circled. It is Gramps' favorite, but always gives him terrible nightmares. Mm -hmm. Should eat glow burgers. A clue. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> Write this down. You got to take notes. Yep, you're in a familiar kitchen. Spot is in here barking at the uh, kitchen counter. Yeah, why is the dog barking at the kitchen counter? Oh, we can look at the counter. There's so a cookie easier. jar. How much easier with that here? <laughs> open jar. I'm just pointing out the obvious. It's already open. Look in jar. Here's a key. Good key. And wow. have the key. Oh, there there's we go. Key inventory. That's pretty cool. Yep. Is that the jar that's got the letter C on it up there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a cookie jar. C for cookie. <laughs> a piece of trivia. A lot of this art was done by, um, some of it was done by David Lowry, but the rest of it was done by Todd Camasta. This is the first game that we had Todd Camasta start working on. And he, uh, he ended up doing the art for a lot of Interplay games before he finally, you know, left and uh, did children's books. David left uh, Interplay uh, when he was just beginning to work on this game because he got a job at, of all places, Lucasfilm. And he went to do storyboards on a film called uh, Willow. Oh. Hmm. And he's been a storyboard artist ever since. In fact, uh, if you look at anything from Disney, like the latest Marvel movies and stuff, there's a good chance you'll find David Lowry as their storyboard artist. Uh, look him up on IMDb. But he started at Interplay doing art for um, Mind Shadow and Tracer Sanction. 
Yeah, I think I first had a copy of this game. I think it was the Interplay 10th Anniversary Collection. Mm-hmm. You're I welcome. Had, I did that. I had Mind Shadow, uh, this one, the I think one of the, the Star Trek 25th yeah, Star Anniversary. Trek anniversary, Wasteland. Battle uh, Chess. Battle Chess. Yeah. Good I'm collection. Sorry. Maybe not. I got a uh, <laughs> David Lowry rabbit hole here. Yes, yeah, so he's worked on Iron Man, War for the Planet of the Apes. Ah, cool. So we're in Gramps' lab. You could use a good dusting. There's a half-eaten pizza in a fishbowl on the bench. Yeah, you probably don't want to eat that pizza. You could try. What happens? It's, it's cold. cold, slimy, and rather repulsive, but you managed to gag some down. You wish you hadn't. Okay. This is why so, you can't take map places. No, I always eat the <laughs> bad pizza. Oh, let's see here. Originally, I wanted to make it so that if you ate the pizza, then you have 40 moves, and then you'll keel over. <laughs> but, uh, it turned out that people didn't understand because most of the people were already in the other world. So they just thought that maybe you needed to do something in the other world to keep you from keeling over. They couldn't figure out that it was because you ate the bad pizza. So we disabled that. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking pretty common in these games back then that you could do something early on and not realize it was a fatal mistake until mm-hmm. hours later <laughs> unless we got somewhere yep. shouldn't have had the pizza fell asleep with a hoop on grabbing some picks and going through to examine pizza nightmare damages <laughs> for some space or fear to be Oh, except for the first part of the book, it's encrypted with arcane symbols and mathematics. That's all you can make out. Uh-huh. Originally wanted to have a image that when you type, look at the book, it actually showed you an image, the arcane symbols, but um, I couldn't fit it on the disc. I remember trying to get this on Apple II disc, that was the original thing. So that image was never drawn, but it was something I wanted to draw, but it was just doing everything I could just to fit what I could fit in the disc. And it wasn't until the later games, like Wasteland, right, where you had the thing where it was the copy protection where you had to read the descriptions in the book? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Dragon Wars was actually the first game where we built the game around the very concept of that we were going to have the book, so we put text that would have been in the game in the book just to save space. Whereas Mm -hmm. the other ones the clue books were really designed just for copy protection how spoiled the modern developers are oh i got the picks wait yeah get the picks yeah Yeah. got the picks cool okay uh we'll go east there's the oh there's nio or dog yep nio I get a little hat on. <laughs> Animation there. What's that thing that looks like a toilet back there? It's a generator. That's the generator. And you can see the switch. In fact, it even says there. Generator is bolted to the floor in the corner. Let's he lets loose a yip as he goes through the speaker. We've lost spot. Yeah. So oh my yeah. god, he killed Slot. <laughs> <laughs> Enter hoop. You always gotta be jumping through hoops. Go. Yeah. Construction I site. I love that art style there. Mm-hmm. Is it something tickles the nostalgia bone? Hey, it's what you had to do with uh 140 pixels across by 192 down. See, before we started, I was talking to Matt this morning, Becky. I had, was uh, actually I was streaming a different game a while ago uh, on my Twitch stream, and it was uh, the Neuromancer. Yes. And you were credited as for, for something called Fast DOS. Can you explain what that is? Oh, um, back when I did Mind Shadow. Um, I created a 
driver that goes into the Commodore 1541 drive. Now that drive has a ROM in it, so I can go upload code into it. Now, the 1541 drive is notoriously slow. Now, you've probably heard of fast load carts like from Epix. What they did is they upload their own code and then they use a much faster serial protocol so you can actually load data from the disk even faster. Well, I took that even a step further where I had code that ran in the drive that can actually read the disk with just one revolution and transmit the data at that speed. So I was able to load Commodore 64 disks in a few seconds. Um, that technology was, I called it fast load. And every game at Interplay used that to be able to speed up their uh, uh, loads when on running on a disk. Yeah, it was used on Mind Shadow, Tracer Sanction, Borrowed Time, Task Times and Tone Town used it, um, Wasteland, um, Bard's Tale, and Neuromancer. Oh yeah, and uh, Battle Chess for Commodore 64. All of them used my fast loader. Mm -hmm. He look at Spot, and now he looks radical. He turns to you and says, Hey, bye to Spot, and low to Ennio. I've arrived. Let's blast. Ennio is following you. Uh, let's see. Did they ever consider having... Well, I guess he, it's all from your first person, so you wouldn't have the dog on the screen at all times. No, and also don't forget that it was... It was... A, thing we had to do at the time is we had to do a lot of stuff with smoke and mirrors because we just didn't have the space to put extra art in the uh, on the disc. The number thing before you was a float phone. Mm -hmm. All right. Where are we now? We're in the salon. Oh, there was, yeah, we got to get. That's Chaz. You got to get your hair cut. That's right. Got a die cut diorama. What there color do we die. want? What color do you want? A style. Got to go pink. Pink, he said. Okay. You think? I don't know how to pink. Is it? Choose pink. There we go. Wild strike of pink in your hair. Now you're looking tone better than the John Boy Waltoon look you had. Let's get back to the teak. John Boy Waltoon. Yeah, a... that did kind of date us. <laughs> <laughs> I can get it. Well, you get it, but you know, somebody today is like, who or what is John? Because it's misspelled, so people just think it's just some other slang, not understanding that we were making fun of Little House in the Prairie. We're at the teak. Yep, we're going to buy jumpsuit by Hooplet. Did, um, let's see, you have the different vocabulary in this game. Is that something everyone sort of collaborated on? The different words for things? Or is there like a dictionary? No, we just made it up. You just made it up? Okay. Made it up. The whole thing is, is that um, when the game was made, there was a rock band called Devo. And Devo was leading the way with electronic music with a, a Max Headroom style of uh, future technology. And one of the things about that kind of genre was slang, street slang. So if you want the ideas where we got inspired, it was Devo, Max Headroom, um, Blade Runner. Um, you know, if you, so if you watched any of those cyberpunk, you know, pseudo futuristic shows of the 80s, most of them had street slang. So we went with that to create this. And of course, the game itself and the world itself was heavily inspired by Devo. Oh, that's awesome. I love Devo. Spud Boy. Yeah, because that's why, you know, the, the clothing, oh. the furniture, the, the architecture literally came out of scenes and, of their records and their uh, their music videos and so forth. So... Uh, uh, plastic sort of cone head. Yeah, the, the flower pot hats. Flower pot hats, yeah. 
But you see, like, the guy here, look at the guy on the right. You know, so he's got his collar going all the way up to his neck and so forth. That's straight out of a Devo uh, costume. Okay, let's see. I'm supposed to go into the woods or something. I think the stone path. I should probably save. Save game. Inia wants us to go on a, a stone path. Is that what he said? So, which is, let's do look again. Mining and snipping at a stone. Path. To the west is a pet store. We can go to the pet store. Oh, <laughs> snarl pets. Oh, the little blob pets. Wow. Those are. Yeah, it says. Got... talks about him in the newspaper that came with the game. About how That's right. Bought yeah. Pets, bought all the pets. Or all the pets are missing or something. Doggies and caddies. Well, it's the blob pets. They're now blob pets. Yeah, and these guys like burrow into the ground, I think. Mm -hmm. You want to read that sign? Yeah. Let's see. Sonic Lock Alarm. Small unlit red light next to it. Let's push alarm. <laughs> push light. Happens. Uh, let's see. Uh, maybe we should look at the blob pet. Yeah. I'm going to buy a pet that'll be by 5p. Okay. How many picks do we have? That's and I have no idea. Apparently we have enough. Oh, we got Blobbo. Oh. Look, picks. I have wait a bunch of picks. That doesn't mean much. Look, there's no wallet, right? No. Oh, he leaves. Uh, what? Oh, it's break time. Come on, it's got to get lunch. Yeah, that's a set alarm. Maybe if you open the glass door. Oh, okay. Open door. Open glass door, one word, man. I think it was open cage, I think it is. Or open something like that. Let's see. Can't open cages. Glassed off wall of blob pets. Maybe try to break it. Oh, he could, yeah. Break, uh... break glass. Break glass. <laughs> <laughs> he raised you Franklin Snarl. Uh hit class. Rose about it. Well we got a cash register here. Maybe we should Yeah, that's true. Look, register. An old black antique looking register. Yeah, modern plexiglass. Unlock register. Hit register. Yeah, the <laughs> Yeah. Now, uh, what about the clock? That's a clock. The clock. Be back in seven. I don't know. Is this is this game in real time? Or does it a does it have a time? Like it'll be eight okay, next time. Turns. Yeah. How many times do you type in something? Oh, the Apple didn't have that real time clock. So basically, it's. Because now if you type in read clock, it should say six, then uh, something like that. At least I remember correctly. It's been a it's been a while since I played this game. <laughs> okay, well, what are we trying to accomplish in this room? We got the pet. Let's see. I think we can just explore. East. Nope, I just was here. Good to find. East. Oh, party supplies. Replace your party masks. Look, uh, masks. Try buying a mask. Black or gold? Let's do gold. Oh, okay. Wear a mask. Get mask. <laughs> Get cold. <laughs> Be specific with this. Wear mask. Yay! Yeah, so we got that. 
they're ahead of their time, you know. They didn't know about the ma- about masks. Mm-hmm. Can't go that direction. Okay, so we've been. Which ways have you gone already? Um, I've gone east and west and south, so I guess we go north. We have a save game, save game again. Save it. There's here a band. Oh, there's a woman. Wait. Yep. Oh, I can go back. Yep, the woman. Let's see. A woman with soft green feathers emerges from the crowd near the bandstand and smiles sweetly at you. Let's smile back. Okay. Smile. Smile at woman. You have to use first names and tell hmm. no, This is the copy protection. Her name is in the newspaper. Oh, okay. Neat, <laughs> fatigued, and sweet. No, it's not pan. Oh, wait. Yeah, there was something about a. The concert promoter. Look in the newspaper. Okay, concert. Let's see. Um, Long- Diana, Diana, something like that. Denise. Daglitz. You pick that, I'll see. It's in the marsh. Roger. Let's see. Where else? Not pan. Look at something here. John Boy walked in and gets walking papers. Buddy appearance side. <laughs> this newspaper is really fun. Where is the concert promoter? Oh, we don't money. Yeah. I'll find it in a second. Female Schnauzer looking for female Schnauzer. <laughs> Go back. Maybe this is an ultra touch rock drummer looking for ultra date who can handle someone with a spastic right leg. Send photo <laughs> and letter to Big Bassy. Let's see, that could be her. Come on. Oh, who went to search this document? <laughs> sure, there is. Okay. Mushroom. Lasagna thick chunk of mushroom. There you go. Yes, the mushrooms. That'll be fun. Mm. Zog is the leader. So when this uh, when this game came out, you did Interplay did have clue books for it, right? Yeah, the yeah. clue books are being sold. I think we sold it was like a, I think the clue book was like maybe sixteen pages long. Because remember the the problem with the game the games of this of this era they were short if you knew how to get through, which is why they had to be uh, very subtle in their hints, figuring it out. Right. Wait, am I going to die? Let's see. Uh oh. What was that girl's name? Oh, that's something. D. Red Devils. Ah, oh, yeah. I'm trying to. Oh, Red Devils, you need to go of the jar. There's a Greta a Grouper, maybe. Is it Greta? Oh, he's waiting. <laughs> jar. That's the lady. What, do you have a jar? Uh, I don't think so. No, you don't have one. No. Nope. 
Yeah. What? Hit Whoa. return again. Yep, there you go. Yeah, if you hit return twice um, or return on an empty line, it'll toggle to only text mode for people who prefer the Zork method of playing. I notice, Matt, you're just using the keyboard. Is it? I am. Yeah, for some reason with this emulation, it's not the mouse isn't working. Yeah, I guess it doesn't detect the mouse because the way the mouse works is that uh, it detects you for the mouse driver, DOS mouse driver, but it looks like it detects it because it's drawing the cursor. But for some reason, obviously, DOS is not passing along your mouse events. DOS box, that is. Yeah. Yeah. It says the mouse captured. It says mouse captured. And if I do. 12, 10. Oh, yeah, I've never had much luck with using a mouse with DOSBox. Oh, I think it works sometimes. It depends on if you something strange with the setup. I'm doing it through DOSBox through. Oh, what is it? that? Yeah. Anyways, you need to, to do the concert, you have to get a press pass. To get the press pass, you have to go to the newspaper. And ah. that's. And then you go into the newspaper building, that's where you'll find NEO is actually a reporter. And that's over near the city. So let's pull up a map. Oh, I see. Oh, geez, this is a bigger map than I thought. I was looking. Yeah, that's why the main reason the screen is so small, the, the art was because since the map was so small, we had to do a picture for every um, every place you can go. I had to really limit the size of the art that I could do. Yeah. Wow, that's a pretty nice guide to this game online. Okay, you're about to die. Okay. Well, see, for one, is that when you enter um, Tone Town, you're supposed to solve the game by about 200 moves or something like that. I don't remember how many. Otherwise, um, Franklin Snarl is going to realize that, hey, you are a, um, um, you're not from around here. And uh. it's, yeah. Of course, if you do not get the dressed, um, like, are you wearing your jumpsuit and hooplet? Yep. In the mask. In, well. Uh oh. Yep. There he is. Oh. That's scary. Nasty snarl. Would you like to try? So, what happened? You went into the well and. To restore a game, just type in load game. And what game? Yep. Devours a game. There's a stone wishing well. A sign says, preserve our wooded areas. Please stay on the trail. Yeah, because you could step on a microbe. The trail appears to go to the north and the east. I want to go east. Did you look in the well? When I went into the well last time, I died. So I'm going to go... Uh, light. And if you had, if you wouldn't have had a red devil in a glass jar, you might be able to see. Hmm. We need to. There's the newspaper. There we go. Uh, good newspaper. <laughs> Don't be such a cheapskate. Buy one. Good newspaper. Oh, can't carry that much. Which article? Oh, is this going to be the... Is it the same newspaper that came with the game? Yep. Oh, interesting. Like when we see... Enter... Building, I believe. It was south. Oh. There we go. Okay, that office of the newspaper. You 
talk to the editor. Have to use first names in Tone Town, it says. Yeah, let's we should have the editor's name here. Let's see. New you. New you. Yeah, N U Y U. Talk to NUIU, but talk oh. NUIU. There you go. Yep. You look down. Got a press pass as a free terminal. You're on photo assignment for the legend. Here's an instant camera. We need a close up of the daglets. Okay. Well, we're a reporter now? Yep. Well, the dog, It the, when he says the legend, the dog, Ennio, is oh, the one really? he's known as a legend. He always sniffs out the best stories. You have to go to the terminals in another room. I think. Oh, okay. He's... There he is. Ennio, the ah, legend. The legend. Type your name. Terminal displays the file. Type Matt. Is oh, it's terminal. Turn. Yeah, try type Matt. Oh, I see. Okay. Yes. <laughs> That's the most realistic part of the game. <laughs> the standard laser induced photon and vision thermal printer. It's pretty good. Got a guide uh, jam. Here. I bet it's got a jam. Fix printer. Try turning it on. Oh. <laughs> Is it plugged in? Now printed. Name. Pass. Print. Yeah, okay. Print. Pass. Oh, wait, maybe you got to type your name again. Type Matt. Yep, yep, yep. Type Matt. Matt. <laughs> Matt, yes. Okay, great. I'm a genius. Pass. We're gonna have to drop something. I think so. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just keep your daglet here. Oops, it's like that. There's your number inventory. There's your number guitar picks. Thirty six. There you go. Uh, Do we, we? We have to wear some of this stuff. Do we need the book? What's the key for? If we drop key. something, is it going to stay here? Because the key is what you use to get into the other room, the lab. So you don't need the key anymore. Right. And the book, you need it at the end of the game. Because without the book, at the end of the game, you're boned. In fact, that's one of the things I got criticized for. Because once you come to this world, you can't go back to the cabin. And if you didn't get the book mm -hmm. in the cabin... You effectively made the game unwinnable. Wow. So I got some criticism for that, and that's kind of deserved. But it's back to the fact that these games are, you know, if you persevere, you usually can play them all the way through in an hour, maybe two. All right. Now that you have press pass, you were told by your editor you need to take the camera to go take a picture of the daglets. That's the yes. concert. Ah, okay. Because if you read your newspaper, in fact, you can read article one, read article two, read article three. Mm -hmm. uh, once you read the articles, it'll give you more clues as to who or what. Also, one of the articles will tell you the name of the girl is Stelgad. Oh, it's RG out. You know, oh, it's way at the end. It's all ultra tass. Zag. Z A H G. You can drop Plunk is the drummer. Well, you could drop the book here because you're going to have to come back here to give him the photo. Okay. And Good idea. Good camera. It says right here in the newspaper. Sorry, we're unable to print a photo of the Daglets. Our photographer has seemingly disappeared. We're currently looking for a new photographer. Oh, it all that. makes sense. You really do need this newspaper. That was the copy protection. Okay. Now go so to the concert. Go. Yep, one up a map. And no, it's just north, I think. Another go. norm. A 
another one. Yep. Oh, no. Go rad, mad. East, wasn't it? Oh, no, there it is. There we go. All right. Spell gad. Or yep. Let's see. Tuck still again. Why? How did I miss the thing? To still get. To still get. Now you need to take that photo. Yep. Take photo. Cheese and onions. <laughs> Snap a photo of Daglet's arm and arm. Okay, now to the photo, you can just drop the camera here and grab the photo. Okay. Now grab the photo. The photo. All right. Now at this point, you got to go back to hand that uh, picture to New You. Yes. Uh -huh. We'll talk to the Daglets while you're here. Talk. All these names. Zag is the yeah the lead member. Yeah. Zag tones. Daglas can make great new sounds. That's right. You need a zag tone. Isn't Gramps the one who invented the instrument? Yep. New sound is elect electrolic. The old man, yeah, the old man came through town a while back and gave us the idea. We wanted to play for the different sounds. Now, notice the clue. The zag tones would damage the equipment. Hmm. The park is a better gig. Okay. So, ask to get the zag tone. I have an extra keeper. Okay, drop the press pass. You don't need it. Great. Get okay. All right. That was the, the key. Once you get the zag tone, they let you go. Just my way of trying to make certain you get the thing before you leave, because once you leave, you can't go back. Mm -hmm. Sure. A gift photo to new you. Yep. We're making good progress. <laughs> Sounds like it. You're proving yourself worthy of a chance to really work for the legend. It's time you and Ennio checked it out. Yeah, that's what we're here to do, right? Is find Gramps. Yep. We think he's being held in the tower. When you get to Snarl, be sure to sick Ennio on him. And that's, of course, your command, sick Ennio. Yep. Okay, you need the jar. That's over at the construction site. Okay, so we're going to go. No. Can't go. Go get the book. Don't leave oh, that. Oh, there. okay, good book. You've got to have that book. And, uh, what's that, North? There we go. Now the construction site. I think it's the west here. Yep. Okay, what are we looking for here? Let's see. I think it was a dig. Oh, oh, the, the blob pet. I think we'll use the blob pet. Blob. Blob pet. Uh, Put it down or drop it. Drop. Yeah, it. Drop. drop. One pet. Shop blob though. So how do you make him dig? Try to remember. Let me look. Pet him maybe. Dig? Type in dig. Yeah, let's see. <laughs> dig, 
dig it. I dig you. Cool. Uh, Do you dig it? Let's see. Oh, is it? Look, trench. Burned by a strong acid. Let's see. Remember, looking at my notes. I'm looking at my game's notes here. I'm trying to remember because it's been a while. There's a bunch of stuff about blob pets in the newspaper. Pets or pets? Let's see. Blob pets can dig a hole in surfaces as hard as wood and will annoy them at the rate of 1,118 cubic centimeters per talk. Right. Tips on care and feeding. Keep a blob pet is on a concrete I surface. Did. Now, you looked in the trench, right? I did. Um, let me... That's trench. their favorite snack. Snacks are aluminum, rubber, petroleum byproducts. And... <laughs> Let's see. We do use another construction. Maybe it's another construction site. Maybe nothing. Yeah, maybe put the blob pet in a certain Tried spot. Put, oh, maybe you know, there's another. I think there's another room up north. Ah, oh, there you go. Okay. Now look. Over there. See, Enio looks over and looks and peers in. That's the clue. Yeah, so look at is. the trench. It says Ennio looks over the, uh, the edge of the trench and peers in. So look trench. Look trench. And discover a jar. There you go. Oh, okay. So we'll get the jar. Get yeah, it. Can't carry that much. Yeah, I wonder was it was the limited inventory? Yeah, the part the, of the design or is that part design because now you have to figure out how to get around to do things with with that. Like I know the mushrooms, there's like a, a place where it is guarded by an eye creature and a nose creature. And if you throw the mushroom at him, it lets you get through. So that's one way to get rid of an item. I'm, I don't remember where the eye creature, nose creature is. Okay, so we can drop. Mambo. Mm. Drop it. Mask, I guess. The jar. Up of the jar. Go to where those um, the lightning things are. Um, yeah. And catch one. And catch okay. it in the jar. Moderation. Okay. Should we be going around without our mask? What do you want to say? Okay. So if we're here. And we're looking for something to put in the jar. We got to go. It was a screen we were before. East. Nice, the birds. We just kept going north. We got the mushroom. This looks cool. Yeah. Yeah, one of the things I've always wanted to do is a remake of this with modern art, make it look really, really pretty. And of course, put in all the things that I wanted to put in, but I couldn't because I just didn't have space. Yeah, I did some work on the closed beta for the Ken and Roberta Williams Colossal Cave remake. Mm -hmm. And that was all text and they remade it so faithfully that it made the graphics in a way were kind of pointless because it was still like the old design. Uh -huh. And so like when there's no story at all, like, I don't know, it was just bizarre sort of playing something that felt, it made it feel more empty in a way than just the original text version did. Mm -hmm. hmm. Well, remember so with the text version, um, it's like reading a book. I mean, mm -hmm. read the Lord of the Rings, the book. Everybody has a different idea what a Balrog should look like. So hence, when they present it on film, some people say, yeah, that's kind of what I imagined, but not really. Yeah, here we go. Whoa, it's the Red Devils. Catch them. Catch, yeah. Catch Devil. 
What? I died. Oh, no. Well, oh, I... Okay. What you need to do is that you have to go to, um, there's a restaurant called uh, Flo's. You go in there and you order the Glow Burger. Um, you first, he, she gives you a pair of mitts. So then you could use the mitts to eat the Glow Burger because it's radioactive. Um, you eat the Glow Burger, woo you feel good. Uh, but now you have the mitts. You use the mitts while you're there so that you didn't get burned from the thing and put it in the jar. That's what we forgot. <laughs> Matt, how could you forget? <laughs> okay, oh, go to that. Yeah, that. That's it. There you go. Okay. Oh, wow. Well, look at this. That's great. With the, can you see the Devo stuff? Looks like some hair. secret, super level of Bard's Tale or something. <laughs> All right, what do I got here? You need to there. Welcome to Fast Freddy's. Activate your brain, your brain's neurotransmitters. <laughs> you be busy. Goodbye. You should try a fizzy with that. Oh, okay. this, is, this is a good moment here. We got our glow burger. Let's see it. Any yeah, wants a cold woofy on toast. And wear mitts. Mitts is two T's. Yeah. Two T's. Get. Ah, oh, got another inventory. The chill. Oh. could probably drop though. What's that thing on the far left? That's a mushroom. I can yeah, I can try dropping the mushroom. That's fine. Dropping shrooms. Yep. Uh, get, get the mitts. Wear the mitts. Wear mitts. Wear, yep. And equip it. And then eat your burger. Eat the burger. Get the mitts. You didn't think that bun would be tasty, but everything was delicious. <laughs> now you can drink fizzy if you bought one. I think we did. Fizzy. I thought it was spelled F F Z Z. Wasn't it? Busy. Yeah, maybe it's uh, busy. Busy. Oh, there you drink. You drank it. You drank it automatically when you buy it. Okay. Yeah, so you got the mitts now. Now you can go over and uh, get the uh, the devil without the, the electric uh, sorry red devils or whatever we are about getting barbecued. Yep. Here we go. Um, no, too many times. There we go. Yeah, so I guess you could play this without ever looking at the graphics. But the graphics add so much to it, probably more so in the, what you said, I think the Amiga version looks the best. Is that right? Well, let me get the two TS. They're the same art. Oh, okay. Okay, there we go. Mitts on. I might want to save it here. Oh, let's see. Catch. Or not. <laughs> devil. Oh, Let's we got the jar with the devil in it. The mm -hmm. devil in it. At this point, you don't need the mitts anymore. At least I don't believe so. Okay. I always Let's... wanted a jar with the devil in it. Yep. Devil's in the details. Hey, you should should get the go back and get the mushroom and drop the mitts. Yes. Let's see. Right, now we got to get back to the well, though. Cause that was it, right? We didn't have the you died in the well because you didn't have the the light and the devil. Yeah, you didn't have the light and the devil, and you also have yeah. I think that's it. Um, Let's see. Going up there. Yeah, it's the equivalent of getting eaten by a group. I see. Okay. Keep going south. I think we. Oh, this is where you'd use the mushroom. Yeah, that's where you need the mushroom. But we don't 
don't have that because I dropped it. Oh well. Yeah, that's definitely a mushroom situation there. <laughs> um, I hope I can get a mushroom right here. Oh wait, whoops. Yep. I'm gonna get another one. You're gonna have to drop the mitts first. You know, one nice thing about games. What? Like yeah. This, what? <laughs> Wait, what happened? Oh, sorry, you were in there too long. If you too stay long, you have trouble long, breathing. Suffocate from shrooms. Oh. I was just going to say one th nice thing about games like this, they do teach spelling. Shrooms. Wait, do we have the? Did you save it after the? You got the doubles? No, I have to do that again. Oh, come on. There we go. Or would it? So you probably. So we only get so many turns in these zones, I guess. Yeah, it says you can hardly breathe. Right. So I think, it, I think she said if you're in it for too long, uh, catch devil. Okay. Now don't do anything. It's just get out of here. Does saving account as a move? <laughs> uh, That's a good question. I Save. guess we'll find out. <laughs> yep. Uh, here if we go back to the well now, let's... Oh, there's another move, okay. Yes. Okay, now you have to throw the mushroom at both of them. Did you get the mushroom? No, we didn't, so... Oh. We did save the game this time, so you can... You left another mushroom at the Vivenio, right? The mushroom. Okay, we got it. Uh, no, your round is... Oh. <laughs> the fertile bed of future mushroom growth. Is that considered a good ending? Well, yeah, so the mushrooms. <laughs> okay, let's. Let's. Okay. Go. Is it gonna... oh. oh, no, you have to have the mitts to. Or, wait, did you already oh, get the mushroom? Yes. Yeah. The shrooms. Get mushroom. <sighs> now I'm dead. <laughs> I think I go to a different room or something like this. Then. Yeah. Go back and get the mushroom you already collected. That's tr yeah. That's that is the easier solution, isn't it? Yeah. Oh. Just, did you save it after you got the the devil in the jar? Yes. Yeah. Because okay. so all can... we have to do is go back into the uh, place where you left the other mushroom. Right. Shrooms. <laughs> no, ah, oh. come on. It's kind of remind me of the snakes in Cooper. Snakes a little bit. The little red devils. They look like Cheetos. Mm, Cheetos. Go south. So I think I put the mushroom in the uh, newspaper room. Maybe in the restaurant. Yeah, in the restaurant. Fast Freddy's. Yeah, yeah. there it is. Look. Here it is. So drop. Drop the blob. Drop mitts. Get mushroom. Okay, go. Now you're playing with power. Okay, number two. Yeah, save game two. Do you know if there's been speed runs of this game? There must have been. I'm certain there have been. Definitely need the fast DOS for that. 
Let me stay on trail. Okay, here we go. We don't want to go. We want to do the mushroom thing first, I think. Yeah, you want to do the mushroom thing first. So... Because the trouble is that's the way out, and they're the guards. So if you're trying to get out of his lab, um, and those guards are there, then they'll trigger the alarm and get you. What do we need to do to the mushroom? Going into the... I'm going to give the mushrooms to those creatures. Uh, oh, that's right. Got to throw here. them at the creatures. Yep. I think it's to the west, wasn't it, from here? Was it? Maybe no, I was wrong. So. No, because that's the. Oh, where is it? A strange, musty odor. Room with twisty passages. I'm glad I'm not the yes. only one that gets yes. lost in these games. Hmm. Where is it? Saved. Let's see. Are we just right there, though, huh? I guess right somewhere near here. Yes, I'm just stuck. Okay. Making this more difficult than it needs to be. Because if I just go, let's see. Find the map. Oh. Whoa. Up there. Okay, so here we just keep going north, and we should make it to where the fire. Uh, the that is not right. I think it's one screen off of this one. No, we're here, and then we go west. And west and again. Down. There we go. There we go. Two meter high creatures. Wait, two meter high creatures or two meter high creatures? <laughs> throw mushroom at eye and throw mushroom at nose. Okay, at eye. Holding it. It's large eyes to swell shut. Crippling it in a sneezing fit. At nose. I think he got him. Okay. So now we have to go back to the well. Is that it? We're going to open the gate or something. Don't ring the bell. Whatever you don't ever ring the bell. You're going to ring it, aren't you? Uh, you saved just so you could ring it. No. Let's see. Open gate. It's be locked from the inside. We can see what happens, I guess. Ring bell. Suddenly uh -oh. the gate. Oh, oh, that's scary. Snarl. You die a most unpleasant death. It rings a bell. That's how the fun is fun and all the fun ways to die. It's true. Let's see. Did you get any letters from concerned parents about the psychedelic? <laughs> <laughs> Nature. No, but I no, it was Bart's tale. I actually had people mail me Bibles. I'm not kidding. Mail you oh. a Bible. Yeah, they sent me Bibles. They sent me um a bunch of religious Felder Carb uh, um letters saying I'm gonna burn in hell because I'm teaching kids, you know, satanic shit, um, that kind of stuff. 
Uh, past times, no, I, I don't recall ever getting any negative, anything about the con subject matter. The only negativity I got was how certain puzzles were hard, especially the one where if you forget Gramps' book in the lab and then you go through the hoop, then the game pretty much is over. <laughs> to go oh. it takes dedication to actually write a letter <laughs> to complain about something well people wrote letters all the time i mean hell you've heard of uh the scott miller letter writing to john romero <laughs> because that's how oh yeah i remember yeah anyways see now you have the the light you can go down here and it's no longer dark because so you won't get eaten by a group Yes. So you got all the way to this point of the game. You'd probably be pretty smart. The filbert. Oh. oh. So it too soon. Oh, um, yeah, we need to wear the mask. This oh, is okay. Mask. You lift the mask somewhere else. You need to wear a mask, otherwise he thinks that you are snarl. And you have to wear the um the black mask. Oh, okay. Because if you look at Franklin's snarl, you will notice that he has a raccoon's face. Because Franklin's snarl is actually a combination of a pig, an alligator, and a um, raccoon. That's what the creature is. He's a amalgamation of the three. If you were a black mask, not the gold one, the black one, it confuses the snarl beast because he's not very bright. And you'll think that, oh, because you're wearing a black mask, you must be Franklin Snarl. No, I think you got to go back to the, the, to the teak. I think we bought a gold mask. In the party supply store. Oh, party supply store. Okay. There we go. Wow. Right here. Get black mask. You already have just get it. You can see it's already on the screen. Mask. Hey, wear a black mask. Yep. And now go down the well. I mean, the, the puzzles seem to be hard, but if you really just sit and think about them, every puzzle is logical. <laughs> That's your well. Okay. I'll do this. Yes. Oh, look at those. Let's see. All the cages containing wild, terrifying animals. A filbert. Yeah, Slate filters from above. Filbert guards the cages. Hmm. Ennius sniffs cautiously at the filbert. Look, filbert. Not anything nice to look at. Filbert. I feel like I'm missing a joke or something with Filbert. Nope. Nope. No, you hit the continue moving. Okay. So flat. <laughs> plague. Plague. Emergency only. Franklin Snarl. That's what it means. Not fuck's sake. Say, <laughs> <laughs> but, but what's a profanity? It means Franklin Snarl. That's the bad guy. Come on, get your mind out of the gutter. Wait, what was it? It was a button. Yeah, but it was an emergency button. I'm up. Yep. Ooh. Uh -oh. Jaw dog. You're wearing the black mask. It's not also not very um in this case, Enio is a dog, so the jaw dog are kind of like, yeah, professional courtesy. <laughs> one around. It's down for a brief chat. like the tree has a hole in it. Oh. Well, that's because we came out of it. We came out of it, is it? Oh. Yeah. Oh, duh. Okay. Hey, pet dog. 
eat the dog. I like to live dangerously. Trying to eat the dog shows your lack of taste. Kill dog. What's it with you and dogs, Matt? I don't know. I'm gonna see. Oh, you're in the middle of an estate. To the west is a wing of Snarl's house. Oh, now we're getting somewhere. Maybe. Oh. You're in his house. Uh oh. You hear crackling coming through the doorway to the north. Looks like Gramps' house, although it's smaller. Read the book. Or think uh, of the book. Drew does have a pizza in nightmare. Also, no, no. It's when you got to uh, keep looking around the place because that's where you'll find Gramps. Gramps is the one who's oh, going to okay. look and do the repair. I see. And he's probably up there where the crackling is. Oh, well, we just were there, so he's not. Oh, well, can you go up the stairs? Uh, let's see. Up. Oh. Can you go up? Let's see, up. There we go. Oh, oh. And there's no exits from this room. Try east out. I think west from here. Yeah. Nope. Going up is the same as north. East. No. Up north. The north lies a steep drop off. Stay, so don't go north. East. Yeah. At the brick walls. The cliff. Hmm. Maybe somewhere in the house? Looking to see. Wow, well, this something to do with that emergency button. Oh, I don't know. What's that? It's those white objects. Those pillows. That's furniture that uh, just blankets on top of uh, furniture. Blankets. Sit on furniture. Work to be done. done. And is there a way to get a list of the exits? That's a good question. Just inventory. Huh. Well, that's a good amount of the game I think we went through. Yeah. I think uh, the only thing left, I think, is just finding Gramps. Yep. Um, I think it's over by the housing development. I can't remember where it was. It, I remember it's that brick wall. When you're in the forest, you see a brick wall. It's the brick wall that surrounds a big housing development. Near there, I think there was a boat. And... They're supposed to use the boat to cross over, and then there's like a, a small tower, and in there is a, like a, not a tower, but the elevator goes down to um, where Gramps is there, and then at that point you go straight into Snarl's. Then you find out you're in Snarl's house, um, and then you give the book to Grandpa. Grandpa then fixes that hoop, shoves. And then he snow shoves Franklin Snarl through it, which then splits him up and ends the game. 
minor spoilers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that's all there is left. I mean, you you found most of the game. Most of it. You found most of the game already. Cool. Well, actually, Matt, I think I have to get going. Yeah, we should wrap it up here. But this but is fun. this is cool. Something different. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, it was a lot of work for what we could use at the time with the technology. I mean, the game itself, you know, if I was to do it again today, it would look vastly different and have a lot more depth to it. But it was the the product of the fact that, you know, we had to fit this on a 140K floppy both sides. And I think, was it one disc or two discs? Uh, but I think I'm almost certain it's just one disc. And, you know, create a parser like you could see several times you were typing in words that the parser should have understood but it didn't mostly because i was i couldn't put in every single two word combination you could think of because i was again uh, fighting the amount of space because the final game took i only had like maybe three bytes free i mean on the floppy so yeah th there was a lot of stuff i remember that we ended up on the cutting room floor that um you know again had we had more space i would have been able to put into the game but uh i hope you liked it yes. yeah wow. thanks was there any plans to do a, a second game at the time or no um there was never a plan to do a sequel and also don't forget at the time this was the time that we switched over to doing games for electronic arts because remember to interplay we signed a deal with Activision to do Mind Shadow and Tracer Sanction. And it was supposed to be a line of games with this character named Condor who gives clues. And we got that's the seed money that really helped get Interplay off the ground. Um, but then after we did those two games, then they were like, well, we really don't want to do more of the same. How about we, you know, that's what we, I proposed, let's do a point and click type adventure. And that's how Borrowed Time got created. And that did well, which then allowed us to do Task Times and Tone Town, which also did very, very well, despite how weird it was. Um, but we then were releasing Bard's Tale and Electron, you know, Activision wanted us to publish Bard's Tale through them, but it ended up going with uh, Electronic Arts because we were, whoops, sorry. We were really trying to get in bed with Electronic Arts because Activision was doing okay, but we saw that if we got in bed with Electronic Arts, mm. we would have made a lot more money. And we did this backdoor deal where I did the port of um, Racing Destruction set for Electronic Arts. It was kind of a test to see if we can actually do the work. And I did the project and Electronic Arts liked that. So then they signed us to do Bard's Tale um bard's tale then came out and made us a, a, a whole bunch of money to which then activision was like you should have released it with us but activision got revenge because if you may recall after we did bard's tale one two and three then wasteland all those five those four games were released through electronic arts we wanted to do our own games publish it as act as interplay is going to be the publisher but we needed a distributor electronic arts of course was saying we want to be a distributor for your titles here's a deal activision came back and says remember us we'll give you mm. a better deal so your first two games battle chess and neuromancer will be uh, distributed by mediagenic which was activision the, the, it's just a brand of activision and in exchange, we'll give you advertising and all this stuff. And Electronic Arts was so ticked off. That's why, um, let's see, stop this. Uh, Activision was, uh, sorry, Electronic Arts was so ticked off. They then told us, hey, remember that trademark for Bard's Tale and Wasteland? And that you're working on Bard's Tale 4? Forget about it. No oh Wasteland 2, no Bard's Tale 4. Screw you, because you went back to Activision. And then uh, Activision was our distributor for many years until Interplay did its own distribution. But uh, unfortunately, when we moved from going with Activision to Electronic Arts, while we did make some money doing these games, 
Um, there was this other company you may have heard of called Sierra that did this major deal with um, IBM mm. to do this game series for the PC Junior. You may have heard of it, King's Quest. King's Quest. <laughs> and mm. it was like either we do evolve our adventure games to something more like the King's Quest engine where you're moving him around on a 2D screen. Or, of course, there was Maniac Mansion and Day of the Tentacle, which also had its own idea, which is more inspired by what we did with um, uh, Task Times and Tone Town. We would have to put more money into these titles and more storytelling and stuff. And we were really focusing at the time doing RPGs with Bard's Tale and Wasteland that we really couldn't do both. And I kind of wanted to go into role playing games, which is how I ended up doing Bard's Tale 3 and Dragon Wars. So that's why after Task Times and Tone Town, while I did have an idea to do Task Times and Two, um, it just I just got busy doing other projects. Now, granted, I still have all my notes for Task Times Two because Task Times Two, because I was writing it in the '90s, was going to be more uh, following the music of Madonna and so forth. Um, that type, the material girl kind of thing, the motifs and so forth. Of course, today I'm going to be looking more like um, with more of the music types that are going on, like I like Taylor Swift and stuff like that would be more of the style that I would be doing. But even then is that um, you know, the whole purpose of the, oh, I have a blank sheet of paper in order for to work with for design because the whole basic premise of Task Times and Tone Town is Gramps created this dimensional porthole to your dreams. So it would make, you know, when you have a dream, you would create this world, then the portal would then take you to that place. Of course, when he eats a pepperoni pizza and so forth, it gave him nightmares, and that's how he ended up making the Franklin Snarl world. Mm -hmm. um, so therefore, with that as a basis, I could just literally make up anything I wanted for. If you had a nightmare or some sort of a dream or Franklin Snarl somehow comes back um, and then you go through the portal and go through that. Like I would probably do the story today in which you're like the grandchild of our adventurer and that you're going to, you know, hey, you, your great grandpa's cabin, Grand, great grandpa, you know, he vanished, you know, he died years ago and now you're here to sell off the house you then find the dusty things. You then find the um, portal, activate it, go through it, and then uh, whatever crazy crap I come up with my brain is what you'll find in that world. Totally play that. Huh? So I would totally play that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, first I would start with by doing a remaster of Past Times and Tone Town, put all the stuff in there. But, of course, like with anything else, it's the... You know, where am I going to get the money and uh, and so forth? And, and the rights are kind of like weird because it's been so long that technically the copyrights expired. So I probably could just do it like, you know, like Colossal Cave. Who owns Colossal Cave? So therefore, right. Ken and Roberta Williams could just make a game called Colossal Cave because who really owned the thing in the first place? Um Pastimes is one of those where it's so old that maybe I might be able to get away with that. Or if, you know, I don't know whether the deal was that Interplay owned it or Activision owned it. And I'm pretty certain it's probably Activision owns it, but then that would mean it technically is owned by Microsoft. And the IP is so old that I seriously doubt anybody has paperwork on it anymore. <laughs> because, I mean, Activision has changed hands numerous times in the last 30 how many years has this been? See, it was 1985. So 85 is 15 plus 24. So it'd be 30, um, 39 years. We're bordering on 40 years since I made that game. So after 40 years of being in a corporation and so forth, who has contracts and paperwork that are 40 years old? <laughs> you know, I bet if you did the game and it was a big hit, that would be somebody coming out of the woodwork. True, but Task Times and Tone Town is one of those like cult classics where yeah. it was a good game. It did well at the time, but you know, 
other than a few people who have some nostalgia for it, most people don't even know who what the heck Task Times in Tone Town is. And of course, as you've seen by the, our little walkthrough, um, the game is very, very primitive by <laughs> modern standards because you know it is a 39-year-old game. So there you go. Well, thanks for doing this. Hey, so anytime, you know, if you ever want to do another retrospect of one of my many, many, many titles, um, you know where to find me. Is there one you'd like to do in particular? Me or Matt? Who's the yeah. question? You, Becky. Um, yeah, there's uh, we can either do Dragon Wars, we could do Bars Tale 3, um, other ones we could do is Battle Chess, um, Wasting. Battle Chess would be awesome, yeah, Battle Chess is good. Um, another one we can do is Neuromancer. Neuromancer is a great retrospective because that also, there was a lot of stuff that, uh, some stories behind that one. <laughs> um, then there's, of course, Mind Shadow, Tracer Sanction. You know, Tracer I, Sanction. I always like Mind Shadow. I had that as a kid. Mm -hmm. And then there is, um, another one we could do a retrospective of is Out of This World. Um, then there's, of course, Sin. Heavy Metal Fact 2 is another one. Um, more recently would be Luxor Evolved. Um, we could play that either on PC or Mac. Um, I also have the console versions. I'm still waiting for Accelerate to just release the dang thing on uh, the consoles. Because the game's done. The game's been in the can since last November. So I just don't know when they're going to publish it. Well, those would all be great. That's, Luxor looks pretty cool. Okay. <laughs> and that's just you know, some of the games I worked on. If you look at Moby Games, you'll find I have like a, a kajillion games I've worked on. Um, so, all the folks watching this, chime in in the comments. <laughs> yeah, say which one you want. And let us know. All right. Well, anyways, uh, enjoy your drinking horn, Matt. If there's any brew <laughs> like from the Dallas area, I'd be more than happy to pick them up, box them up, and send them up your way. Oh, cool. I mean, we do have a lot of microbreweries here that I'm certain you would like to sample. Definitely. I'm actually <laughs> thinking I might go get a burger. Hey, glow burgers are great. Yes. <laughs> Spread your mitts. Yeah, don't forget the mitts. Don't forget the mitts. <laughs> don't forget the mitts. If you're not wearing, if you're I always not forget wearing. the mitts. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, my friends. All right. Yep. Thanks so much. Okay. And uh, don't forget everybody to watch... Uh, Matt Barton's little uh, show and uh, and Matt's what's the name of your show again? Matt Chat. Matt Chat. No, no, the other Matt, Matt Bradley. Oh, Matt oh. Bradley. Um, I don't have a show anymore, so. Okay. So this is gonna be for Matt Chat. Yep, Matt Chat. All right. Oh, watch your Matt Chat. <laughs> you have double the mats now. Yep. I know. Did two for a price of one. <laughs> when you can't have just one. <laughs> <laughs> And that's all. <laughs> I don't know. You know, I never really looked into the horn that much. It's kind of kind of fascinating in there. Uh, anyway, that's all for this week's episode. Hope you guys enjoyed that. I uh, got some really great stuff coming up in the pipe. Uh, we might have some really big names on the show pretty soon. Uh, I don't want to say 100% sure because you never know how things might <laughs> fall, you know, might play out or fall through the cracks or whatever. Uh, but man, if we're able to get at least even half of what we've got planned done, uh, you're really going to be uh, happy and glad you supported the show. Uh, as always, I want to thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for supporting the show. You're totally awesome. You're totally tuned. <laughs> you, you, you Taz, man. <laughs> uh, thank you for supporting the show. It, it's it's really been fun doing this, and I like to keep on doing it, you know, for as long as <laughs> to the foreseeable future. And we've got so many designers, so many games we could cover. Uh, we couldn't do any of it without you. Now, if... For whatever strange, absurd, and crazy reason, you have not stepped up to the plate and uh, become a Ratron. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Just go to that link in the show notes. Uh, a buck a show. All I ask to become a member. I get access to all sorts of cool stuff, including live things uh, that we don't open up to the general public. I'm hoping to do uh, more of that kind of thing, more hangouts and things. But uh, we got the great Discord channel. 
you know, a lot of uh, great content on there. It's really a buzzing place. I'd like to see you there. Uh, also, if you want to, uh, you know, whether or not you support the show financially, it certainly makes a big difference if you tell other people about it. Even just liking the video, if you send it to someone, share it somewhere, post it to a forum, you know, anything like that. I see that and I really appreciate that too. And so thank you. Thank you. Whatever you do to support Mad Chat, you have my gratitude. You can't spell gratitude without rat. I just thought of that. Pretty good, huh? <laughs> okay. Anyway, what about that news from the Mad Cave? <laughs> Oh, what about that new Man, I got some kick-ass news. Look, uh, I've been playing this game. I've had him on the show before. Al, uh, what's his last name? <laughs> I'm blanking on that. But anyway, uh, his uh, game is called Scald, S-K-A-L-D, colon against the Black Priory. Uh, now, I've done some work with the prologue, uh, some of the demo stuff that had been out before this, but the real game is out now. It's 10% on, off on Steam right now, $13.49. Now, I do intend to do a full match chat on this game because it is awesome. It's <laughs> just totally buy it. You don't need to wait for my match chat. Uh, you're really going to love it. Uh, it's getting all sorts of uh, kudos and awards and uh, recognitions, including from Swin Vinka of Larian. He says he's going to come home, <laughs> kind of vacation home early, uh, just to come home and play the game. You know, I don't know about that, but uh, it wouldn't surprise me. Uh, anyway, I will warn you, the game's got some foul language in it. You know, I'm going to put that out there. You know, I'm kind of going to uh, see what I can do. <laughs> I think it needs a profanity slider. <laughs> uh, so it may not be appropriate for, uh, you know, small or for kids or, you know, if you're sensitive to that kind of thing. But that's the only negative I can possibly think of about this game. A totally awesome time. I'm not quite done with it. I want to finish it before I review it. Uh, but stay tuned for that. Uh, all right. And then Miko uh, writes in about uh, the Wayward Realms Kickstarter. Uh, the Kickstarter has started. <laughs> it has launched. Uh, from legendary game developers Ted Peterson and Julian LeFay. Now, of course, you know who that is, don't you? Well, I had to look it up. <laughs> uh, Daggerfall. Okay, so they uh, have some really solid credits to their name. Uh, they want to restore the scope, choice, consequence, and role-playing to RPGs. Uh, this is a game that aims to bring the old-school design philosophies of classic RPGs together with the latest tech and quality of life improvements courtesy of Unreal Engine 5. So that sounds like a really solid plan to me. And who better to do that than the people that made Daggerfall? One of the great uh, procedurally generated uh, role-playing games ever. Yeah, still considered one of the largest games ever crafted. Dragonfall was <laughs> massive. <laughs> Remember that pipe organ? <laughs> and I had a lot of fun with that game. Uh, anyway, maybe I can get these guys on the show. It'd be fun to talk about this new project as well as, uh, of course, uh, Dragon, uh, Dragonfall. No, 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 no. Uh, Daggerfall. <laughs> maybe one of those days. Uh, all right, and then lastly, uh, there's a new roguelike out called The Doors of Trithius. They got the trailers up. Now, I think this has been an early access for a while. There's been a demo out there somewhere, I believe. But now you can buy it on Steam. $14.99. It's by Jake Donker's Goad. Combines classic roguelike ruthlessness with the freedom and depth of an expansive open-world RPG. I assume you know what a roguelike is, so I won't belabor the point. Uh, but anyway, one of the things I thought was cool about this is that the uh, uh, developer, Jake uh, Donker's Goad, is really a great musician. Uh, so I guess he, I'm, I'm pretty sure he did all the music for this game. He's got a great uh, sound cloud where you can listen to a bunch of piano compositions. I mean, he's a, you know, the real deal when it comes to music, uh, which I think is more important than a lot of people uh, give credit for. <laughs> you know, by the way, Scald also has a magnificent soundtrack. Holy God, everything about that game is awesome. <laughs> uh, but uh, definitely check out The Doors of Trithius as well, especially if you like roguelikes and cool music. All right, let's uh, look at the, uh, <laughs> about that ale of the week. Oh, man, I butchered that transition, but we're going to go on with it. Uh, all right, I got another one of these brew dogs. Uh, and this one is the not, uh, Hazy AF, a New England style hazy. 
embrace the opaque. So yeah, I got these in a multi-pack uh, variety sampler. I think there was something like eight different brews in there. <laughs> I, hate this. I have to say, I haven't liked any of the other ones. Uh, but maybe uh, we'll strike gold with this one, the Hazy. You know, I, I went to a, a comic book convention about a couple weeks ago. And on the way back, we ate at a place called Tavern Burger, something like that. And they had a, some non-alcoholics uh, there at the restaurant. I ordered one. It was a chocolate. Uh, I think they called it chocolate. Uh, no, it was a s'mores. <laughs> it was a, a, a s'mores-inspired non-alcoholic brew. And, and that was so good. Uh, when I got home, I did a search for it online. I figured out where I could buy it online. I'm having some shipped to me. Uh, so hopefully I'll have those uh, to review soon. And uh, that one was incredible. <laughs> My hopes are not so high with this brew dog. Uh, hazy AF, but we'll see. You know, it's just kind of been amazing to me, considering how much I like BrewDog's regular beers. You know, you think their alcohol-free ones would be uh, really top quality, but they have really been missing the mark. But we will see. Keep an open mind, an open palate. <laughs> That's a nice color on this. A very light, sort of light amber, almost a peach-like color. Uh, decent head. Yeah, there's some bubbles in there. Ah, oh, smells really, really good. Okay, that's a good sign. <laughs> you know, people underestimate the importance of smell, uh, but always think that, you know, making a beer smell really good is half the uh, the battle. Let's see, can I do this? If it smells like a beer, well, step one. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it smells very citrusy. Uh, a little bit of a lemony uh, aroma on this. All the other ones have smelled great. It wasn't the problem. Uh, but let's uh, give it the taste test and we'll see. <laughs> uh, let me give it another swig here. Yeah, now this one does have a, a bit of flavor to it, kind of a uh, a little bit of kind of a lemon zest, lemon rind uh, like flavor to it. I think you would definitely be able to tell this is non-alcoholic because <laughs> uh, it kind of tastes more like a, a hopped uh, sparkling water to me. Uh, just, that's been my problem with all these brew dogs. You know, I mean, I, I mean, just uh, I'm tempted to just skip the rest of the brew dogs. I probably will when I get to the. Uh, I get to that package from Untitled Art. You know, I just, uh, I don't know who would choose this. <laughs> you, know, you know, if you, uh, if you're someplace and you, uh, for whatever reason, have to have a non-alcoholic beer, and this, it's either this or water, <laughs> you might pick it, but uh, otherwise, yeah, there's just so many better options than this. I will say, if you don't really want something that tastes like a beer, uh, maybe you just want something light and refreshing and sort of uh, beer flavored, you know, uh, uh, you could try this. Although, uh, even with that, I, I want to say Surly, uh, the people that make those uh, really good Axe, uh, was it Axe Man, something like that, uh, Furious, Surly Furious, I think they got a couple of brands uh, like that. Uh, they actually have a hopped sparkling water uh, that's zero calories. And of course, zero alcohol, and that is clear. <laughs> and I got to say, I would rather have that than this, because uh, with this, uh, it tastes just as good, if not better, than this. Uh, and it, uh, you know, has no calories. It's basically just uh, <laughs> sparkling water. Uh, but anyway, let me give this one uh, last swig here. Yeah, I just, I'm not a big fan of these. <laughs> what can I say? I think I'll spare you uh, the other two that I have in the variety pack and just uh, move on because I'm kind of tired of uh, saying the same thing about these. Uh, if you got nothing else and you need alcohol free, you know, okay. <laughs> uh, but man, there are so many better options out there at this point uh, than BrewDog. Uh, I don't. I think they've really just dropped the ball uh, on the alcohol free, non-alcoholic beers. 
Uh, again, I, I'd probably go, I'm going to say it's it's undrinkable or anything like that. You know, it's okay for what it is. So I'd go maybe a two out of five again on the drinking horn scale. Uh, and, but compared to real beers or, or alcohol beers, you, you know, there's nobody's going to pick this. <laughs> uh, but anyway, it's been fun trying them. And, you know, that's the thing. Uh, when you really are into beer like me and you try, I probably tried hundreds, if not possibly even thousands of beers. You know, and part of what makes that interesting is, you know, sometimes you get the ones that suck. <laughs> That's okay. Because uh, it just makes you appreciate the good ones all the more. All right, let's wrap it up with a quote. Uh, and I've been reading some stories by Talbot Mundy. I've been reading, a, I was reading some Robert E. Howard stories and I saw he was quoting this guy called Talbot Mundy. Like, who the heck is this? I looked him up, he was another kind of a contemporary with uh, Robert E. Howard, uh, writing adventure stories, not fantasy uh, stories, but kind of a, I don't know what you call them, maybe kind of spy stories, adventure stories, <laughs> lots of uh, Middle Eastern politics uh, and things of that sort. So I picked up a collection of his, uh, and there's some pretty good quotes in these stories. Uh, so anyway, I thought I would share one with you. This gives you a pretty good flavor uh, of the writing style and the and the characters in there, if you're curious about Talbot Mundy. Uh, anyway, it goes something like this. Disguise, as any actor or detective can tell you, is not so much a matter of makeup as suggestion. It is little mannerisms, unstudied habits that identify. The suggestion that you are someone else is the thing to strive for, not the concealment of who you really are. I just thought that was <laughs> profound. <laughs> anyway, hope you guys enjoyed that and I'll see you next time.